So a major transformation, say over the last five, six years so, or so, um, and I was telling you about this, it's fascinating that one out of three in licensing deals in this space that the U.S. companies are doing, some of the multinational companies are doing, are with Chinese counterparts. So what is really the biggest driver? Is it innovation or some sort of a government put there, the policy push? Yeah, well, thank you very much for having me. Um, I think it's, uh, it's a combination of a lot of factors together. Um, government push is definitely something happening here in the past decade. Yeah. Uh, not only they um, streamline the approval process for dr new drugs in China, not only for domestic players, but also for multinational players too in China. Uh, but more importantly is China's reimbursement system, um, you know, China's single-payer system with over 90% population covered by government-run medical insurance, mm -hmm. right? That insurance system started to cover novel drugs since 2018, 2017, mm -hmm. right? This is making the affordability much better. And also, you know, if companies invest into innovative drugs, the return profile is getting better. And more importantly, uh, we stayed in Hong Kong in 2018. Hong Kong market opened for uh, pre-revenue biotech companies to get listed, IPO, becoming possible. Uh, and that really attracted a lot of capital flow uh, into the innovative drug sector. Mm -hmm. So I think all those together has been driving the innovation uh, in the China biotech space. Mm -hmm. And basically, um, because of that, a lot of talent has been coming back uh, from China, uh, well, from US and Europe to back to the China. Mm -hmm. So I think those are something, you know, really happening uh, to drive the innovation in the China market space. Mm -hmm. And I was actually hearing, I mean, this is just a one claim, of course, but Scott Gottlieb, a former um, government official in the United States, he was basically saying that China is gaining advantage in the United States because of the cost advantage. And what he was saying was that some of these, many of these um, deals are done in China, like the licensing part in China. And then um, these U.S. companies would actually bring in the uh, clinical uh, test uh, stage of this process in the United States because it's cheaper. Is that what you're seeing on the ground as well? Um, I think there's a couple of reasons. Mm -hmm. um, you know, cost saving is definitely one of the factors, mm -hmm. uh, but it's also more efficient. Um, let's put it this way. For all the license out deals uh, between China and global players, about 60% happens when the asset is still at a very early stage, preclinical and also phase one stage, right? And if we count in uh, another 15% to 20% at a phase two stage, then we're saying 80% of the license deals happening at a very early stage. Mm -hmm. So for early stage, um, I think China definitely providing, you know, much faster and much cheaper uh, clinical trials. And given large population, uh, given the cost, you know, it's always being cheaper in China versus in the US. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about probably for per patient cost of 300,000 US dollars, mm -hmm. right? In the US, but in China, probably we're talking about $5, uh, $5, uh, $50,000 to $60,000, right? So that's a lot cheaper. Uh, but most importantly, I think it's because of the China sectors, now they are investing heavily um, in innovative drugs. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of new type of drugs, we call it new modalities, that China becoming so important in the global pipeline. So that's why when global farmers is looking for something new, then they have to come to China for this type of things. So yeah. Why is that? Why, why does China have advantage in certain modalities, as you mentioned? Yeah, you're right. Um, the modality we're talking about is where the science or biology has been more established, okay. right? While engineering part play a much bigger role here. Well, uh, when we talk to some investors, some might refer it as one to 10 innovation instead of zero to one innovation, right? So this is really leveraging China's very large, you know, access to patient population, very large talent pool in China. And also, of course, in the past 10 to 20 years, a lot of scientists in China accumulate a lot of know-hows in how to work on this type of engineering part of the drug development. Okay. So I think the, all those are driving the lower cost and also, you know, um, much faster development particularly at an early stage of the, of the drug development. So what, um, what kind of prospects do you think that some of these rising Chinese biotechs have in, uh, in, in gaining the, 
the scale of some of the world's largest pharmaceutical groups and, and becoming household names around the world? Um, well, um, Mandy, I would say, you know, for that perspective, it, it really depends on how we see China going to be insert influence in the global pharma communities, right? Now, if we're looking at the number of clinical trials sponsored by China, uh, and also uh, we're looking at it from the lens of the early research works, China already becoming very important. Uh, we talk about, you know, uh, about one third of the assets that under clinical trials are coming from China. And we're talking about those licensing deals, global licensing deals, about 30% is happening between China players and also global players. However, if we're looking from another lens, right, late stage development and a commercialization, then China is still, I would say, very minimal impact for now. Um, it's still a long way to go. Uh, in the global market, um, particularly in the U.S. market, there's about 200, more than 200 drugs. We call it blockbuster drugs generating one billion US dollar sales every single year. But for China, originator drugs, probably we can name two to three that already becoming meaningful in the global market. And also, if you look at the global multi-regional clinical trials, which can actually support the drugs to get approval by FDA, then those trials, probably low single digit percentage uh, has been sponsored by China players. So now, if we're looking into um, the global market, right, China players trying to be more meaningful. I think the best way they're going to do that is partnering with international players. This is also one of the reasons international partnerships are becoming something very essential in China's R&D strategy. A lot of China biotech companies, pharma companies, when they think about what kind of project they're going to be working on, they will be definitely thinking about how they're going to potentially in the future looking for a partnership for global development. So this is why in the past three to four years, we start to see the emergence of licensing deals in China space.